Hi, my name is Mark Walker and I'm Editorial Director at the Fintech Times. We're here at Seamless Middle East in Dubai and we're here for Seamless TV. Perhaps you could introduce yourself to our audience. Hello, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Very excited to be here. I'm Numan Hassan. I'm the Regional Director of Paymentology, looking after Middle East and North Africa. Wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure to have you here. Likewise. So, obviously, uh, we're, we're aware of Paymentology, back from, uh, from the European side of things. Maybe give me a little bit of an idea of, you know, where and when Paymentology decided to come to the region. So, it was three years back, obviously, the, the center of gravity of FinTech was shifting. Uh, this region was a greenfield, lucrative, so we decided to step in. And Paymentology is a global entity. It's a new processor. And with a mushroom effect happening in the Middle East, a lot of banking licenses are being granted by the regulators. I think this is a time because the awareness is also elevating in the people. So we can see a lot of uh, uh, entities, a lot of fintech, uh, uh, a lot of fintechs, a lot of telcos, you know, a lot of retailers stepping into um, the payment sphere. And I think it's the time to capitalize. It's a really interesting. I think one of the interesting things about that is this event at Seamless Middle East. We have a retail element and a financial element together in one show, which doesn't tend to happen anywhere else in any other region. I've not seen that happen in the US or even in Europe. Do you think that is one of the reasons why the, the growth has been so quick in this region? You know, uh, again, it's, it's, it's a big topic. First of all, one needs to understand that the region is basically, you know, a lot of expert communities. There's uh, the, from the remittance. I mean, there, there are figures coming from the World Bank that remittance floating to low income or medium in income countries, it's like growing at a pace of 5% every year. Six, 26 billion in November 22, that's a World Bank figure. 50% of the population of this region expatriates. Just imagine cross border, just imagine the personalization required. You know, people would like to get uh, power on the fingertips. All this can happen if the FinTech is up to the mark, if people are embracing the technology and most of the banks here, most of the, I would say, entities, financial entities are state owned. They have the capital, there are investments going on. And almost every sector is getting into um, the payments because there are opportunity. I would say the center of gravity, like I said, is shifting from Europe to the Middle East. Secondly, I would say everything is being rearranged. I always say that uh, it's a creative chaos that is happening. It's an innovation disruption, destruction that is happening. Everything is getting rearranged. The central figure is the customer, and you would like to provide more opportunities to the customer. And this is where a lot of fintechs, a lot of retailers, a lot of telcos, everyone involved in the fintech space, they want to capitalize. And yeah, that's what we are seeing. And that's what's happening, exactly. So let's, let's have a, a little bit of a chat about the region as well. Yeah. So the MENA region is quite extensive and very diverse, wonderfully diverse. Yes. You have some very different areas of, say, Egypt and Cairo very, very different to the UAE. Um, how, how do you go about as an organization facilitating better payments for all of the regions? It's a very good question. First of all, we are a global organization. So we understand the dynamics. And just to let you know, you, you mentioned Egypt, you mentioned not uh, Africa. So figures, obviously, and figures are backing what we say. So again, half of the population of MENA unbanked. 22% of the population of GCC unbanked. Opportunities are there. So that's number one. Second thing is, we're providing the technology fine, but technology should be seamless, right? The experience to the customer, the experience to the customer should be seamless across uh, the border. So you should provide experiences, you should, pro you should provide technology that can expand, you, uh, expand the payment ecosystem beyond the borders. So for example, if I'm transacting in Europe, I should have the same experience if I'm transaction in, in MENA. The world is a global bridge, village, right? Everyone is connected. So gone are the times where you were really only concentrating on Europe. You have to tap each and every consumer. Multi-currency cards, I mean, bringing a lot of opportunities, right? Similarly, I mean, remittance, as I said, bringing a lot of opportunity. Wallet solution, building a lot of opportunities. You can see the likes of Revolut coming to the region. There is a reason why, right? The mass population, obviously Egypt, 140 million. We talk about 140 million. Here, people awareness are really increasing. There is a lot of urbanization happening in the Middle East. Everyone is carrying smartphones, wearables. So basically, tech saviness is impacting the whole, it is shaking the foundation of the 
uh, traditional banking model. And this is where I think new, new markets are opening up. There are new players in the market. And yeah, I think uh, as the floodgates are opening, <laughs> innovation, technology brings innovation. And innovation obviously you know, increases uh, the options that the customers are getting. It's a rat race, I would say. I was gonna say at the moment, it, as you say, they've gone through a massive re uh, time of um, uh, expansion. The, the payment options at the checkout now are, are getting quite extensive. Um, surely at some point there needs to be a, consol a consolidation. And do you think there will be a harmonization of a payment system across the whole region? Again, look, every almost every month we are learning something new. The fintechs are, I would say, the torch bearers of uh, innovation. I mean, look at the products that we have, starting from buy now, pay later to lending solution. And, and right now, data is the key, right? So getting data is easy. How you use data is critical. So technologies such as blockchain, such as artificial intelligence, robotics, cybersecurity, cloud computing, big data. The whole FinTech solution is probably, as I said, it is being rearranged. FinTechs are playing an important part because they have the technology expertise. They are providing options to the banks, to different players, to the retailers, you know, to partner. And this is how the whole technology is helping to re-innovate re the way consumers are looking at uh, payments. But, but again, uh, consolidation, I think you have to keep up with the pace. Uh, the key success is embracement again. And uh, the success is directly proportional to the extent to which you're embracing the technology. So that's very important. Consolidation will happen, but consolidation will happen uh, in an upwards direction. I think legacy banks will be moving towards new banks. The new banks will be uh, providing more and more technology. So at the end, I think consolidation will happen in terms of how the banking is taking place, how uh, you know, the consumers are being treated. For example, the consumers do not like banks, but they need banking, right? So uh, the data, you need to personalize the data, you need to provide uh, people experiences, you need to bring shopping closer to the customer. So when you say consolidation, I take it in a fashion that the banks are moving towards the new tech. So this is how the consolidation is going to happen. The legacy banks, the established banks, the legacy retailers, they are going to realize and they are going to come closer to the technology. So that's the key. Okay. So that sounds very interesting. I think obviously in, in Europe we talk a lot about embedded finance and this sort of stuff. Do you think that's sort of like on the trajectory for the banks as well, where they uh, maybe interact more with fintechs to provide those other services? The answer is yes. And uh, when you say fintech, one needs to understand. When I say the pillars were shaking, so, so traditionally, we are talking about Mina here. Historically, I would say the maximum the banks were offering were cashbacks, loyalty, right? They were tapping, they were planning to bring the cards as the major instrument of payment through these uh, initiatives. Whereas, there was ma something massive happening in Europe. The wave of digitization was sweeping, you know, the traditional banking sector or maybe shaking the pillars, as I said. Yeah. Creative, innovative destruction. <laughs> so. This is where I think the likes of N26, the likes of Revolut, the likes of Starling Banks, Monzo's, they actually change the, changed the mindset towards the consumer. Consumer centricity became more important. People are, banks moved out. Banks realized that they don't need branches. The network of branches, the bulky operations, uh, uh, balance sheets fueled with debts, they no longer exist, right? Customer makes life easy, make make the life easy for them. That that's what is important. So, so yeah, I mean, um, talking about Europe, talking about APAC, talking about Mina, consolidation, you know, providing one single experience. Right. So more like the personalization of finance, getting it all much more about the individual, much more centered around the consumer. Exactly. So you you talked about embedded finance, right? So one important thing, what is a neo bank? So the so the partnership I would say between the fintech financial technology sector, right, and technology, they uh, it it created a vision for neo banks. That's very important. 
Now, what is a new bank? A new bank for me is a con is a consolidation of different type of services, embedded finance, for example, lending, core banking, issuance, acquiring, X Y Z, blockchain. So it's a combination of services that that uh, that you're offering to the consumer, offering to the consumer under one hood, one uh, platform, one smartphone. So so that's what you're you're providing to the consumer. The more you can, the more you can elevate, the more you can embrace the most successful you know you get so so yeah embedded finance is one uh, obviously the, by the way when you talk about embedded finance it's necessary for any entity for any new bank to be tech savvy as well the ease of integration right uh, you should be a, you should be able to provide apis you should be able to provide middleware you should be able to provide i would say uh, easy access so the banking and that's that's a say everyone says it the bankers of the future are people who are in the technology domain so this is how uh, you're bringing technology closer to the consumer so yeah that's i think i i spoke more yeah, apart from right. the embedded technology <laughs> the combination of neo bank embedded embedded finance is one of it okay and thinking about sort of uh, paymentology in yeah. the region what what's what's on the cards what's next what are you focusing on at the moment Okay, first of all, as paymentology, we are we are we are we, we are global. We are the next generation new processor, API driven, uh, cloud agnostic. So we can they basically deploy our system uh, in a timely fashion. We are not only tapping customers. We are not only providing them uh, prepaid debit credit cards, but more than that, right? We are providing APIs, rich. A dictionary of APIs. We're providing services such as tokenization, Apple Pay. Right? I'm not carrying a, a wallet at the moment. I'm using my phone, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, and then obviously the 3DS, the e-com, e forming partnership with payment gateways. So, the vision for paymentology is to provide solutions, state-of-the-art solutions, cutting-edge solutions, in multiple locations, and plus uh, under one umbrella. So that's our focus. We are plan. We, we want to actually break, uh, you know, the traditional banking sector. We want to create new opportunities. We want to focus on customer and data. Data is important here because obviously, just take an example. If I am a consumer of a retail app, let's suppose, and I'm a foodie person, I can actually dictate the spend patterns of the customer, right? I can land tomorrow in London. If I can showcase the customers or if I can send notification to the customers of the number of restaurants around me offering discount just imagine you're prompting the customer to do more transactions what happens you're increasing the revenues of, uh, of your entity of the financial entity so as paymentology we're helping banks we are helping retailers we're having we are helping all uh, types of financial institu institutions to actually provide that seamless experience to the customer one important thing that I would like to mention which uh, we talk a lot about new banks. We talk a lot about retailers, about fintechs, telcos. Fintechs, they are interesting and my favorite subject, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the future is everyone will become a new bank. The fintechs at the moment, they're providing white label solutions. Products such as banking as a service, for, uh, fintech as a service, card as a service. The ultimate goal, and this is the answer to your consolidation question that you asked me earlier. Mm. The consolidation is towards becoming a new bank or becoming an entity that can provide n number of services to consumer. Ultimately, the benefit is for, is for the consumer. All about consumer. So very much consumer-led future is what we're looking at. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us here at Seamless TV. Thank Powered you very much. Times. It's a pleasure.